awesome godly champion in all content. So the first time I pulled Duchess, I was actually sitting on the toilet. I was just on my phone and there was another extra legendary event. This was around the same time that, um, what's his name? He's a poison, what's his, um, he places four poisons at the start of each battle. And uh, he's a spirit affinity, I know that for sure. What's his name? Oh, hit this guy, here, Calvalax. Calvalax was just, oh, you can't even see me. Calvalax was just introduced to raid Shadow Legends and there was a two for one event. I pulled a sacred and then I actually summoned Calvalax and then I also summoned Duchess, this one. The second time I pulled Duchess was actually due to my wife pulling my shards on stream one day. Thank you for 969 subs. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, oh my god! <laughs> for like like what three, two three years now Yo! <laughs> oh wow that's so cool god <laughs> damn i know right <laughs> oh thanks babe you're it's, welcome it's, i've always wanted another duchess oh another one right well you can't just like plus one for you well bye everyone and that was this duchess right here or was it this one or this one i forgot and today I want to go over how to build Duchess, her skills, her kit, masteries, the entire shebang. Let's go ahead and get, jump right into it. Okay, so if you happen to pull three Duchesses, is it worth keeping three Duchesses or should you start empowering? Personally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep three Duchesses. And if I happen to pull any more Duchesses after this, then I'm going to start filling up my Faction Wars. Because I think that my Demon Spawn Faction Wars is still lacking. I could still get some extra defense and speed here. So I'm going to pull more Duchesses and fill them out. Or just pull more Demon Spawn Factions and fill them out. After that, that's when I would start plus one-ing my champions. Her A1 attacks one enemy twice. Then places a shield equal to 10% of her max HP for two turns. And also on the champion with the lowest HP. Her damage is based on defense, by the way. Her A2 places a block debuffs buff and a 50%, that's the big version of increased attack on all allies for two turns. And then she places a perfect veil on all allies except this champion for two turns. So now the entire team can't be debuffed unless they strip it first or have a block debuffs or have a block buffs buff. Deep. If they have a block buffs debuff on then this isn't gonna work she boosts everybody's attack and then she places veil for those of you who do not know what veil does just in general veil reduces all damage received well actually aoe damage it says it right here aoe damage is reduced veil only reduces it by 7.5 and perfect veil reduces it by 15. now the other thing is that these champions that are under veil or perfect veil cannot be targeted and then finally the buffs cannot be stolen by an enemy champ with a skill that allows them to steal buffs so nobody is stealing veil or perfect veil it's a great skill to have for survivability because now not only can they not target any of your other champions they have to target duchess and with duchess being naturally so tanky uh it's going to be hard to do anything you're kind of stalled out in a sense her a3 is going to revive all allies with 70 percent hp this is on a four turn cooldown it's pretty cool not only does she revive but she places the veil and then she provides a continuous heal an awesome support champion all around and then she also has a passive that decreases damage taken by all allies aoe attacks by 25 percent 15 percent from bosses so if you're taking her into arena she's going to have everybody receive less damage from something like Taurus's God Hand. Or if you're going up against the bosses, Hydra, for an example, where pretty much a lot of their moves are all AoEs, she's going to keep everybody else alive. Then she has a 19% boost to speed in all battles. And in a lot of cases, I actually use her 
as a lead for some of my teams. There are two ways that I have built Duchess and let's go over them. The first way that I would build Duchess, and by the way, I use both of these Duchesses in PvP and PvE. The first Duchess right here is going to be in a Bolster and Immortal set. You could do Regen if you wanted to. This Duchess is designed to just keep living, constantly be healing. So she goes into a fight with Bolster. So going up against somebody like Uko, who relies on buff strips completely before um, he's able to place a block buffs or a decreased accuracy debuff, this will make it so that the uh, shield is protected and nobody on your team can have those buffs um, stolen. The, the shield buff specifically, I hope I explained that correctly. The other thing is sometimes you go up against people who nuke against your team, but going in with this Duchess makes it so that they don't die immediately because shields are actually pretty cracked in raid. So 30% on all allies for your entire team. This is three turns, so your team is going to start out by surviving quite a bit. And then Duchess is also going to receive a 10% heal on her HP every single turn that she takes. Then she's going to get a boost from Immortal, 15% boost to HP, and then another heal for a total of 13% of heals. And here are the pieces of gear that I have on her. We're prioritizing kind of speed, a little bit of speed, but mostly survivability here. We have the HP on the HP. Some ways I could improve this, Ascension, Enchantments. I haven't changed this build out for quite some time, so maybe it is due for a re-gearing. Maybe she is due. All of these duchesses are, are due for re-gearing later on. Reaction sets work quite nicely because you have a chance to hit weak or you have a chance to have somebody else hit this duchess weak. If you also have a uh, counterattack ring, that's also great because she counterattacks with her A1, which places a shield, and that's even more annoying. And if we're talking about stats here, Again, priorities should be having over 100k HP. I understand that maybe not a lot of you guys have that kind of gear, but the point is prioritize HP defense. You want her to live as long as possible. And the more HP she has, if you're going to build her like this with regen, regenerative abilities, you're going to want to have a lot of HP so she's healing that much more. Ideally, you'd want more speed on her. Honestly, I'm looking at this. I would want to have at least 240 plus speed, the more the merrier. Uh, another addition that you could probably do, maybe not on this Duchess specifically, but there's nothing wrong with it, more resistance. Having a high resist Duchess is really, really, really great to have, especially if you're going up into uh, Plat or Gold 5 higher end arena. Uh, having high resist makes it so that your buffs can't be stolen, so that Duchess can't be stunned, skills put on cooldown, that type of thing, that really helps out. For this specific Duchess, for Bolster Duchess, these are the masteries that I have for her. Do not blindly copy masteries, but if you want to blindly copy masteries, be my guest. We're taking damage mitigation, extra resistance, extra heals. So shadow heal here, we're going to heal, uh, help Duchess heal even more. Increase res to your entire team because she places a lot of buffs. It's nice that she places a lot of buffs. Cycle of Revenge to have a chance to increase turn meter. Counter attack masteries. We're taking support for extra HP. Uh, to increase the shield size by 5%. Anytime one of her buffs goes away, her turn meter has a chance to uh, go up. We're going to do Cycle of Magic to have a chance to reset one of her cooldowns. Some stat boost. Lasting Gifts to extend those buffs that she places. And then Timely Interventions so that whenever an ally's HP goes to 25%, then she is going to increase her turn meter so that she could try to keep them alive uh, in one way or another, or at least make it so that she can revive soon. The second Duchess that I have is built in Stone Skin. Stone Skin and Immortal. I did try to do a two turn Stone Skin, but I found that having a little extra healing, healage from Immortal was helping me out quite a bit. Here are the pieces of gear. If you guys don't know, Stone Skin is a buff that comes onto Duchess, and whenever somebody tries to do anything to Stone Skin, duchess nothing happens for the most part they can try to place buffs uh, look look at this one counter attack they can try to place debuffs i mean and they can try to attack the stone skin but it's just it's basically like punching the earth the ground you're, you're punching the earth you're not doing anything until it finally uh erodes or goes away here we're also prioritizing high hp this one has about a thousand less defense but it's decent 
But the thing here is this one is going leagues faster. I had to make this Duchess a lot faster for the purpose of uh, pushing plat because I wanted to do uh, plat pushes. And so that's why I had this. This Duchess has high resist. So that's another thing that makes a difference. So if you don't already know, this Duchess is more so built for PvP. This one is more geared for PvP. And this one, even though it is kind of in a PvP build, it's not entirely the same thing. So how could you improve this one? Same thing. I would try to get stone skin accessories and see if I could bust out. Here, here's one right here. This one's actually not a bad banner. Because once you get another two pieces, then we get two turns of stone skin. This one, I actually might change it out. But then we're dropping a lot of speed, and so that's the thing. I'd have to take another look. That's one way to do this. I would like two pieces of, uh, two turns of stone skin and then immortal on this one. But I still want to make her faster. I'd want to make both of them faster. That's how I would do this. So for her masteries, what we got going on in this one is pretty much the same thing, except we're taking extra resist. Because I wanted, even though 450 is not really high, especially for gold 5 or plat arena, the more resist that I have, the better. Uh, there, there's room for improvement. I'm aware of that. It's not the best Duchess out there, but, you know, I'm working on it. How am I going to build my third Duchess? Not exactly sure yet. Uh, there's a there's a few things that I, I could try. I have seen Swift Parry Duchesses before. That could be extremely annoying. So let's see. We have uh, we have some Swift Parry, Parry here. We get Speed Boost, Crit Damage, not really doing anything for us. But Unkillable could be a little bit annoying. Some, some last minute pop-up stuff. Uh, we could do a Guardian set so that she's still healing but keeping the rest of the team alive. Protection set Duchess would be a really good one so that everybody has their buffs protected. I could try to do another Stone Skin. Righteous would be a decent set. Extra speed and resistance. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to build my third Duchess, but um, I'm going to try to see if I can build a Duchess like super fast and see how that goes. Where do I use Duchess in general? The most prominent place that I use Duchess is in Arena. So she is part of my regular arena team. Now let's go ahead and take this one on uh, just to show you guys. This is my my regular offense arena plat push team. So Yumiko goes first. She My Yumiko is actually decently fast. I often do outspeed Siffies and Arbiters. And so Duchess places all the buffs. And as you already know, Taurus receives a great damage boost with every buff that is on him. Actually, not just on him, but the entire team. My main attack team, my main offense team includes Duchess. This is what I normally run. I run her in the lead. If I think I need extra accuracy, what I do is I just put Romantu in the lead here and I get extra accuracy from, from there. But we, we're just gonna go ahead and do a few arena fights and show you guys what's up. So of course, Hegemon's gonna go in, do his thing. We're not going to revive because Lydia is here. But as you see, Yumiko went first. We placed the um, skills on cooldown. So we're going to do this. And Ashtalon actually removes Veils. So that's that's an interesting um, champion. I don't see too many of him. But here we have Taurus. And you guys already know that Taurus has an increase to damage based on how many buffs are on the entire team. So he pairs very well with somebody like Duchess. In fact, if I were to go in with my bolster Duchess, this might even be better, just because uh, that's another buff for us to uh, go ahead and, and, uh, and deal with. But uh, Heprax here, so I don't exactly want to uh, deal with that quite yet. I mean, I don't want to kill everybody quite yet just because Heprax is there, but now, now we can do it. And we're good, because Taurus. And I actually like to pair Duchess with Candy. Kandrafon is an insane champion, great, great nuker. His A1 hits super hard. His A2 obviously hits pretty hard. He's got this, but his passive pairs extremely well with Duchess. Damage increases by 40% while attacking under Veil or Perfect Veil. Receives 40% less damage when under Veil or Perfect Veil. This is on a three turn cooldown. Also boosts this champion's turn meter by 5%. Each time this champion receives damage under Veil or Perfect Veil and also places a perfect veil on this champion for once or any each time a turn meter is filled. Obviously, you'd want to pair him with somebody like Duchess. So let's go ahead and do this fight. The The nice thing about Kandrafon, he doesn't care about being locked out. So sometimes I'll go up against like a Warlord or a Yumiko. He doesn't care. The reason he doesn't care is because he just hits so damn hard. Now let's go ahead and kill Duchess. Look at that, just swipes right through. Let's go ahead and just throw this on auto. Let's get rid of this Thor. 
Nah, in the side thorn thorn in the side get it this mythical champion is quite annoying as well not that it's gonna you know mean much but you know inquisitor shamael i've seen uh shiny shiny i think it was the one i, I first saw do the uh inquisitor shamael during plat push i know he hits pretty hard if you build him right for it i mean inquisitor does just a, a lot of damage in general so you guys get her in arena She's also part of my regular 3v3 team. So here are the three main teams that I normally use for Arena. I think what I'm going to do is probably move this around. But I can have three Duchesses now for a 3v3. So that's going to be fun to see. These are my, my main uh, Arena teams. You just saw a showcase on both of these. So I'm not going to do another 3v3 fight. But let's go ahead and do Live Arena. Now, I'm not the best Live Arena player. In fact, I'm just not really big on PvP. Pretty average when it just comes to doing raid, but well, we'll see what we can pull off here. Maybe I can get lucky enough. All right, GDZ Jackal, what are you gonna? Who are you gonna choose? Sun Wukong, Taurus Yimiko. Probably should have started out with Duchess since I'm going to be trying to showcase because sometimes they do choose Duchess. So let's see here, don't choose Duchess, man. Don't do it to me. Nice. Okay, so. We're going to have to choose another damage dealer. Let's go in with Rodos. And depending on who they pick, I think I'm going to go with Tormin. Because that looks just like an awesome, awesome team to freeze. Yeah, okay. So, that's another thing. Hmm. Well, I think we'll just choose Warlord instead. And let's get rid of Sun Wukong. So that there's no buff strip going on. I'm actually... I really don't like bomb teams. I think they're extremely annoying. So we're probably going to be outsped here. Let's just take the extra res. It's almost like they're just really cheap. It seems like a really cheap team. But I, I get... Oh, he didn't have stone skin. Had I known that he wasn't going to be running stone skin, I, I should have gone with, um, with Tormund. That's it. That's game. Oh, he's going to be a dick about it too, isn't he? Alright, well, we'll see. Can I... Is this even going to help? Is this even going to help? Oh my god, guys. That was quite the back shot. That was a massive load right there. He just took a massive dicking. I didn't even know it. I, Dude, Taurus just came out of nowhere. Taurus just blew his load all over his team. It just, it's crazy. It's crazy. Taurus, again, just giving infinite back shots. So he pairs pretty well. I, I don't want to go into another live arena fight because I'm just, like, not the best. But, um, yeah. Uh, another place that you could use Duchess is obviously in your, if you're not running an unkillable comp, Duchess provides quite a bit. So you could put a traditional team together running Duchess. She's going to give you extra speed, survivability, because there are a lot, two of his moves are going to be AoEs. So 15% damage reduction. She brings the revives with the heals, increased attack, block buffs. So if you're worried about stuns, you could tune it properly. Um, she actually also pairs pretty well. It's actually an annoying team, Pytheon. Let me just sh show you guys real quick. Because what Pytheon does is he has a passive called Overlay, which makes it so that up to 25%, your allies will receive less damage for each buff on them. So Pytheon paired with Duchess is actually pretty annoying. Uh, you could pretty much make a stall team using these two together with like somebody else, I don't know, UDK and, and um, I don't know, just somebody really annoying. Uh, funnily enough, I do know a guy, his name was Tavish, who actually early on cleared hard... <laughs> he actually used Duchess to clear Floor 100 hard of the Scarab King, because if you guys don't know, the Scarab King is going to attack and steal buffs every single time you attack him without a shield. Well, because Duchess actually has a shield on her A1, what he did was put Duchess in a toxic set. It's actually pretty funny. Maybe I'll try that. And if you happen to summon Taurus and you want to start giving infinite back shots to everybody, Taurus is actually one of the most reasonable champions out there and you can see him perform right here.